Hello and welcome to this month's technical training podcast from AMSYS Training. Today's subject will be an overview of the DNS server bundled with Mac OS X Server 10.4. If you have any suggestions on future podcasts, please feel free to email your ideas to podcasts at amsys.co.uk. For a full list of Apple authorised training courses and other services, please visit our website at www.amsys.co.uk. So to get us started, let's have a quick overview of what DNS really is. Uh, firstly, DNS is one of these lovely acronyms we all come to love. DNS stands for Domain Name System. If you've ever used the internet for browsing or for sending emails, then DNS would have been involved. We use Domain Name Servers or DNS servers to translate human readable network names such as www.amses.co.uk to a unique IP address. All computers use IP addresses as a means to be located by other computers on a network or the internet. The problem though is that IP addresses are very very hard to remember as in, in this example of 195.82.109.18. Instead it would be far easier for us users to locate the computer by a more friendly name. So when you enter a URL into your browser, such as www.amses.co.uk, a DNS server will tell your computer what IP address is associated with that name. Your computer can then go off and communicate with the computer you're trying to access by means of its IP address. But as a user, you entered a friendly, rememberable name. So without DNS, we would have to use just IP addresses for URLs. So let's see this process in action. Here we have a user who wants to display the AMSYS website. The human friendly version for the URL is www.amsys.co.uk but the IP address of the web server is 195.82.109.18. Remember, without a DNS server, our user would have to enter the IP address as the URL to display the website. So instead, the user enters the friendly version of the name. Before attempting to display the page, their computer will first try and find out what IP address is associated with www.amsys.co.uk. It does this by asking the DNS server that it's been configured to use. The DNS server can be treated as a telephone directory. The server will have a long list of names with their corresponding IP addresses. It receives the query from our client for www.amsys.co.uk and looks for any matching entry it may have. If it finds an entry, it will send the matching IP address back to the user's computer. Once the user's computer receives the IP address, it can now communicate directly with the web server to display the page. So let's have a look at how we can set up a DNS server under Mac OS X. Here we have Server Admin, which is the main utility we use to configure Mac OS X server. On the left hand side, I have a list of all the servers I'm currently administrating. If I expand this server, I get a list of services that this server currently provides. So here is the DNS service, which I can um, click on to select. Like most of these services on the Mac OS X server, we have a start stop button at the very top which allows us to start or stop specific services. Now to set up the DNS server, we have to tell it what domain name the server will be responsible for. To do this, we click on settings and then zones. A zone is basically a domain name we wish to host. So to add a domain, we then click the plus icon. In this window, we will enter our domain name, so as an example, we'll put in ancest.co.uk. Remember that if this domain name is to be used on the internet, you will have to register this domain name with your ISP. If it's just for an internal net closed network, then you can use anything you, you wish. What is very, very important though, is to make sure that you add a trailing dot. If you don't, make, if you don't add this dot, you will get very, very bizarre results, especially if you're running Open Directory Master and Kerberos servers. Underneath we enter the unique name for this server. By convention, because this is the, this is the DNS server, 
the name defaults to name server, but if you wish, you can change this. Notice how the admin utility builds up the fully qualified dom domain name. The fully qualified domain name is the name of the machine appended with the, um, the domain name. Next, we select the IP address to be associated with this name. This pull down menu will list any IP addresses configured on the server. So we've only got one at the moment, so we'll click the default one and then click save. So now we have one domain set up. If required, we could add many more domains. The next step is to add any additional computers that require DNS name to these domains. To do this, we edit the existing dom domain by clicking the pencil icon below. We are first presented with the screen we used to create the domain. We will now click the machine tab. Here we can add additional machines. It already has the DNS server listed. To add additional machines, we click the plus icon. So firstly, we are asked to enter the IP address of the new machine. We are then asked for a unique name for this machine. So let's assume it's going to be our web server. So we're going to enter www. Again, notice the admin tool has built up the fully qualified dom domain name based on the names we entered and the name, the domain name. In this example, www.ansys.co.uk. Then we click OK. We can add as many computers as we wish to, as long as they have all unique names. So let's add another one for our, our print server as an example. We click Add. We enter the IP address and the name print server and then click OK. Another useful feature is that we can assign multiple names to a computer. You may want different names for a single computer based on the services it's supplying. So as an example, imagine our web server is also an FTP server. We can edit the entry uh, for the web server and use the alias feature. This allows us to add additional names, so here we can add FTP .ansys.co.uk. We do have to type the whole name in for the alias, including the trailing dot. Now this machine has two names. Finally, mail servers have a slightly different setup. We first still need to add an entry for our mail server. So we click add, we enter the IP address of the mail server, and we're going to give it a name of mail. So its fully qualified domain name will be mail.ansys.co.uk. We then check this checkbox. This tells the DNS server that this machine is a mail server. We then enter a precedence number. This is a number between 0 and 100. The lower the number, the higher the precedence. So a number of 0 will have the highest precedence, 100 will be the lowest. This feature is useful if you want a backup mail server. When mail is sent, it should go to the machine with the highest precedence. If for some reason this mail server goes offline, the DNS server should point the mail to the next mail server with the next highest precedence. Finally, the recursion checkbox. With this feature turned off, this DNS server will only resolve names that have been added specifically by your administrator to the zones it's currently managing. Uh, what if your clients want to resolve names outside your organisation, especially those who want to browse the internet? Well, just turn it on and your DNS server will then check with other DNS root servers out on the internet to resolve any names it can't resolve. Well, we hope you found this introduction on DNS really useful, and stay tuned for future podcasts from AMSES. Bye-bye.